Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Communicate Christian Truth Through Comics and Graphics. This is Ramon Rocha from MAI, welcoming you all who have registered from 19 countries from four continents. Our guest moderator today is Jose Carlos Gutierrez, based in Mexico City. Jose Carlos is an international comics um, illustrator, designer, and artist. He is the director of the International Comics Ministry, Comics 35 Next Gen. He also serves as a trustee of the MAI International Board. I first met Jose Carlos at BitWorld 2012 in Nairobi, Kenya. In fact, we were roommates there. Thank you, Jose Carlos, for serving as our moderator today. Over to you. Thank you very much, Ramon. Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you for all of you who registered and who are here with us from many parts of the world. I see many familiar names. Hello. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and stay updated for uh, new training webinars and events. So I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about comics and how to communicate Christian truth through comics and graphic novels. I have here with me, uh, Ivan Anaya from El Salvador. He is a professional comic artist. Uh, he graduated from uh, the University of Palermo in Argentina from uh, he studied uh, comic design. He has worked in companies in the United States, uh, such as Image Comics, Dynamic Comics, DC Comics, among others. He has done independent comics in Argentina, Brazil, El Salvador. He was conceptual and narrative artist at Stonebutt Studios in the video game area. And now at Mercy Way Studios, he's art director and lead comic artist and writer. He's the creator of the series, Don't Fear, winner of an award in 2017 as the best children, children's biblical project in Germany. So uh, I'm so happy to be here with Ivan. And before turning the mic to him, please put your comments on the chat and your questions in the Q&A. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, welcome Ivan here. Hello, everyone. How you been? I'm saying hi, I'm from El Salvador, just like Calvo said. Um, I, I'm not is, used to speaking English, so if one word is just not in the right way, be merciful with me, please. And here we're gonna speak about two subjects that I really love, is just making comic and sharing Jesus. So I think this is going to be a great, great morning for all of us, and let's hope the Lord is just guide us for everything. So uh shall we share now carlos yes, uh, yes. Uh, ivan's going to be uh, answering some questions such as what is a comic what are the advantages of using them to share biblical truth uh are comics attracted to children and adults and many others so uh for our audience who may not be very familiar to this genre tell us ivan wh what is a comic well let's one of the things that we have to to learn and know that it's a comic is something visual. So let's keep it visual. Let's make uh, something that people can actually see. And I wanna just show a little bit about what I do. Uh, like Carlos said, I am a comic, comic artist. I've been in the industry working for many, many companies. This is just a sample of my work in all the stuff that I work in video games and comics and publishing and you know, a lot of stuff. But the question that Carlos said is just what it's a comic. And let's just say it is located with the morning classification of the arts. It's considered the nine art, something that not everyone knows. It's just, there's exist, exist like the classic arts and we know painting, theater, literary, music, dance, architect, architecture, and cinema, photography, and the comic is the nine of, a, of all. It's just so important how the comic is just work. And just to, to make sure 
one of the definitions is, is a series of drawing that constituting a story. Uh, can have text, can have no text at all. You can work with emotions and also is the, is the, is the medium. It's just like a, the entire industry or comic industry, it's called comic too. And actually one of the definitions that I really love is just come from Scott McCloud. It's an amazing, an amazing book that called Understanding Comics. And it just say just about illustration and other image in delivery sequence with the purpose of transmitting information or obtaining an aesthetic response for the reader. And just to make even more clear to him, it's just something that is think, it's just the sequence of image that is think and used to tell a story to trying to reach one response from the reader using image. Can be beautiful image, can be a simple image, but the idea is to make use of the image to get to the audience. So that is something really important. And the comic is something that it's not in the United States. Maybe we think, and the idea that the comic is only in the United States because more of the representative is there, but the comic is something around the world. It's a worldwide format and you can see it like in, in Canada and in, in the United States, it's called comic book. In Mexico, it's called monitos. It's just like little monkeys, that's the word. Uh, Costa Rica and South America, it called historieta. In Brazil, it's called quadrinos. Spain is Tebeos, Catalonia is patufet. In France, it's Vendée de Ciné, that actually the, the, translate, the, the right translation is just a, a bunch of, of if, if you see the, the roller of, of the movies, it's just that when you see every image. And Italy is Fumetti, upon is manga, if you heard that word, manga, the translation is comic. And Korea is manga. So, and, and I think you, I can say that now it's just part of culture, general culture, not only just uh, pop culture, like we know, right now in this 2021, comic is just part of general culture. Everyone knows what it's a comic. Everyone knows one track of comics. That is something not for just a special people that only read comics. No, right now, everyone knows what it's a comic. And for for some reason that I think is amazing, everyone is just drive to that idea. It's so cool right now to read a comic, to know about comic characters. Uh, the movie industry using that like is just the golden mine. You can make so much money in that. It's not the it's not the point, but you see that the idea is everyone knows what it's a comic. It's part of the culture, not pop culture. It's just the entire culture. So. The comic is, it has some funny idea because that description that I told you is something that the man has been using since, I don't know, he started. Using image to tell story is come from, oh, I, something is got it in Spanish, sorry there. Uh, but you can see like in cave paintings, you can see like how they tell the daily, uh, Activity, activity that they have, they just draw everything. We can know how they live for the uses of the image in the caving. And Thomas Rawlinson also in the civil world of France used illustration to tell something about that. But we can say that the first comic per se was Yellow Kid in 19, in eight, in in 1896. It's just something that changed the entire idea of how the comic works. He had the idea of that yellow kid is just have text that changes and say what yellow kid has to say. And for that reason, all the comics from Action Comic in 1938, in 1941, until now, is just something that it persevered. And that is something that we have to understand. The comic is something, is a resource that captured its readers in all ages. I'm almost 40 years old. I read comic for fun. So that is something that can work in so many ages. You can find an infinite variety of genres about comics. If you like to read a book, you can find that genre in a comic. 
there is not only the superhero comics. There is a lot of possibilities a comic, and like one of the one art to say, the paper can tell every story that you want to tell. It's easier to make. A, it's easier than make a movie. It's easier to make an animation. It's easier to make something even bigger. The paper can hold every story that you want to tell. It can be something huge and epic. Or it can be something so small that appealing to each 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 person in each house, but it can capture every age. It's also a resource that that knows how to adapt to the pass of time. Prints in the print in the print print idea is something that is really cheap for some reason. Well, not for some reason, but uh, the paper and the quality. If you go to the to the print format, is one of the very cheap one. And also can go to the digital era and translate into digital. And right now, comics are co-living in print and digital, and you can have both. Actually, that is something that I'm going to talk about. It. That is something that we do right now, co-living about the both ideas. So just to recap what you just said, the comic is one of the principal arts, is the art art. The entire idea is they want to tell you one story. This is something personal. I don't know if you notice if you have the, the chance to read a comic. It's going to use your imagination as no other stuff because you already have one visual incentive, but you're going to put the sound of the voice of that character. You're going to embed it. And you're going to mark the, the time that you're going to take to go to the next page or you're going to be the one who actually explore every panel and understand that is every one of us is going to have one personal experience in each comics. It's, it, it's, it's something like that. It's so great, it's so huge. And you can make that for every person. So if the story capture, you're going to have a personal experience that is not gonna be just like the experience that someone next to you just have. Something that persevere in time is a format that can hold in the time. It's something sequence, the, the sequential narrative is gonna use the past of the actions to tell a story. It's something that is art, it's something that is a tell story worldwide and is for everyone, all ages. So having all that recap, and I hope everyone is just, this is not a comic history class, but, but it's, it's I'm really passionate about this. What about a Christian comics? There exist Christian comics. Did you know there was so many great Christian comics already? Let's talk about the Christian comics. Uh, if you don't notice, the Action Bible is the Bible in comic. I invited you to read it. It's just amazing. It's just how one of the greatest story ever tell in all of the things that I just tell you that is going to be personal, it's going to make you tell a story, the Action Bible, just grab it in the best way possible. It's just something really amazing. And I, am, I admire Sergio Carrello, one of the artists did that because he actually captured what the feel of the Bible is. Uh, and if you go and search for the charts in Amazon, for five years in a row, every month, the Action Bible is being in the top 10 best-selling books in Amazon. That it has to tell something. It has to tell that the Bible is something that is relative, uh, not relative, it's just relevant, sorry, relevant is the word, relevant today and comics are relevant today. So it's amazing, you can go and check it out. Actually, there is a new version that coming out this year they have more comic pages, so I there is something that I just want to read. And also the Bible stories, you know, if you like I said, you can have in a comic just the entire Exodus. You can tell in a story something epic like the ocean, the sea open it, and just the fire cloud is just coming down from the sky. You can have the strongest man alive, it's just Samson. You can describe the miracles of Jesus. So the paper and the comic or, or the, the comic format can, I think it's amazing how they good fit with the story of the Bible. Because the Bible is just have one 
uh, it, it have many intentions, but one of these tensions is that they, they want to put us in the narrative. They want to tell the story of how God is creating us that is not abandoning us. It just come closer and the story just point out to Jesus. It's one big, huge story about humanity, the purpose of humanity, and having just one format so narrative as comic is just, I think it's perfect. And I think it's a match that can work very well. And not only that, you can tell Bible fiction if you have never read Eternity from Randy Alarcon, it's an amazing book that tells the story of the rich man, Lazarus. He's just expanding the story and tells so many great ideas that actually taught you. I, I remember I was reading this in a Starbucks and I started to cry in front of everyone. I just run to the, to the bathroom to clean up my face, but this is a mo in an emotional story. And you can have like Bible themes, you can have apology. Like I said, as Christian, this is a format, this is the use of a format that can actually work very well for all ages. Not only for kids, not only for, for Sunday school, it can work for every one of us. So <clears throat> what is the advantage of using comics to share biblical truth? And I wanna tell something that Tim Mackey, if you have never heard of him, he is one of the co-creators of the Bible Project and he has one, uh, this sentence that actually helps to think why we, we need to tell the use the comic as a narrative medium to tell the story of the Bible. When you immerse yourself in the biblical narrative, you will learn to see yourself reflected in its characters. And they open your imagination at the same story, and the same story begins to read you while you read it. It makes you see things about yourself, ourselves, about God, and about our relationship with others. One of the intentions of the Bible, I don't know if you noticed, but the Bible is really few about describing a character. You, you cannot find how what the color of Jesus' eyes were. But the idea is just you have to use your imagination. The idea of the of the telling is, is just how the characters are working that that they need to use your imagination. So in the minute that you start to get yourself into the story, the story is going to start to read you. It's going to be a change of readers. When you're reading the story, the story is going to start to read you. So imagine using that idea in a personal way for each comic. Like I said before, thinking about telling people about that story that is going to have a personal connection. It doesn't mean that it's going to not use the Bible anymore. No, it's not the idea. Like I said, it's a research that can be a Bible companion. They're gonna add some visual rainforest to the story of the Bible. <clears throat> it's actually, it's a format that can deal with current issues. You know that every generation has a lot of issues that they need to talk that is not actually in the Bible. Like it's good to, to do this, to do that, that is, doesn't happen in the Bible you know, period. So you can use that, the comics to, to share that. They can tell stories that were uh, of character with worth, with worthy values to emulate. I know you know someone who actually have a kid or have a teenagers or have a cousin, really a, an adult, that they want to be Batman. I know you know, and I know it's you, but, uh, Everyone wants to be Batman because you see like he's the cool character. He has no superpower, but think, think that idea, Batman come from a comic. Think that idea to you have like kids that they want to be David. Kids that they want to be Jesus, like Jesus. So you can build role models in comics that is going, that can change the mind of a new generation. And if you say that never happened, look this generation. A lot of people, they dress like Spider-Man. They, I, I love Spider-Man. I have no problem with it. I never dress like him because the, the suit's not gonna fit me. But the idea is that you can have that role models. And the Bible has the best heroes ever made. The best epic story is start in the Bible. 
the underdog idea of the of the the hero that is just a small one but he makes something big go to david david was i think the first and or maybe could not be the first but he's just one of the most recognizable you can everyone there's a big team against a huge uh, small team what is the idea is david versus goliath so everyone just had that idea here and you can make that idea even more re you can make that idea even more real in your head with the story of of a bible or of a comic or the bible story so i think it also is it, it adds something to the generation everyone each one of us right now are having a conversation in many countries around the world and i can see the face of carlos in mexico and you can see me around the world Sorry, it's really early in the morning. So one of the things that we have to do right now, we are a visual generation. We are used to see everything, not just hear, not just read. We are used to see, to see image, to see in the street, there's a lot of images about uh, publicity, about products, about all the stuff. And we don't, we have to expect that the kids the new generation, they need some visual support. They actually need something to have visuals on it. And the comics I think is perfect for that because they have the rich quality, the visual quality to actually engage new generation. It's not going to be just letters. It's not going to be just, uh, I don't know, it's, it's small, it's small drawings. It, it, that's okay, I think it's, works very well, but right now, everyone is used to a lot of visual exposure. So the comic is full visual, 100% visual. So I think the comic is the perfect form for this generation to actually tell the story of the Bible or the biblical, biblical truth. And also what I say, just a, 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 a personal connection. And I, I, I'm gonna speak here in the Salvador and maybe can be your case but if you don't if you notice not everyone is just so engaged to read the bible it's not that easy to make a kid to read a bible in in fact it's a huge book that can be i don't know it's overwhelming if you see it it's a lot of pages a lot of letters if you're small we as a, as a, as a big person we know we need to read the bible as a christian but for a kids it can be really overwhelming so I think the use of one of the advantages of the use of comic and that can awake interest in a generation this history, this we have they have no interest in read the Bible. And they can change that. It's, it's not going to be a huge book. And I, I'm not I'm not against the, the book format about the Bible. I'm just gonna be clear, clear with that. But I think it can be overwhelming for a new generation. And the comic, I think, is the perfect. It can be a look, like the, the like the, the the action Bible that I just spoke early. That is amazing. You can have that, and they're going to have page over page over page over page about visual influence in one of the greatest stories ever told. So I think that can actually awake an interest in a generation of reading the Bible truth, and in in. In the same way, the same way of the Bible works is the same story. They have the same principles, so I think it can work. And are comics attractive to children and adults? And I have a great yes. Uh, more than ever, the comic is everywhere. We are a part of a visual generation in every age. Each one of us has a cell phone. So we are part of that visual generation. And if you don't notice, now more than ever, entertainment is part of our daily routine. We are uh, an entertaining generation. We have all the streaming services. We have big movies. We have video games. We have social media. We have just make a list is going to be a huge one about how everything is just entertainment. And comic is just part of the entertainment. But what if we entertain people in at the same time 
we tell something that is eternal? What if we tell, keep you in, in, in your toes about the story that we are telling, but they have principle, bi biblical principles and values that can overcome for eternity. And you're going to feel like you're entertaining, but actually you're going to be reading something eternal. Sergio Carriello had, had one sentence in one video that you can find on YouTube. He said, I'm not just making a comic. I'm just telling something that can change the life of someone. And sometimes you have to pause and think what you're doing. And I think that is amazing because this story, the story of the Bible, the biblical truth can change the future, the eternal future of someone. If he's entertaining in the process, it's okay. No problem with that. But I think it's just, you can change someone. It's just like the chosen. If you never see the chosen, it's a great show. It's entertaining. It's amazing. Well done. And they have some profound biblical truth. They can shake you and make you cry and broke you and, 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 and make you see Jesus in the way that the Bible is representing here. So I think it's, it's a great idea to use entertainment for our advantage. We're not going to win the war against entertainment. We have to use entertainment to share the kingdom. Also, this measure, yeah, this is something important. Uh, the message that we are telling in comics, using the comics for that is relevant until Christ's return. So our Lord and, and, and Savior has not returned. We have to share this message. It's for now, as wasn't important in the, in the time of Paul. Paul said, Jesus come really quick, really soon. So for us, it's really quick, really soon. We are what, he, what Paul has said, this is the future of the church. We are the future of the church. And we don't know when Jesus came back. Can be right now, can be in one year, it can be in 100 years. So we have to make a new generation that make that message is still relevant. And one of the things that uh, I think is the, the use of the entertainment, we will see a lot of series. We know we do. And, and if you say no in your head, I'm glad if that is true, but it's not. I hope you, you ask Jesus for forgiveness, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we are better suited now more than ever to be inspired by interesting narrative and well-constructed characters. We let the serious narrative to actually influence us. I cannot tell you uh, this is going to be fun, but I, I cannot tell you how when I was little, I was seeing Dragon Ball uh, like crazy every time. But I see how Goku never give up. And that actually influences me because Goku never give up, I will never give up. So I'm not saying go and see Dragon Ball. I'm just saying that that well-constructed character can actually influence the mind of a little kid. And what if that mind of the little kid is not going to be, I don't give up. What if it means I'm going to still trust God in the middle of this situation? What if I going to keep having faith? What if I, if David never give up about trusting God, even he was in the desert, I will never do that. So let's switch Goku with David and let's switch what I learned with something that is eternal. So that is the entire idea of this. It's not something that, hey, just make great. It's just what are we sharing and how are we going to do it? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I hope I'm okay with the time. So right now I'm going to speak about what it's uh, the process, my process about creating a comic. Uh, yeah, before, okay. before, uh, yeah, before going further, um, what you said about storytelling, it's very important because uh, yeah. storytelling has been growing with man and with human history, uh, with uh, social uh, issues, political issues. Uh, uh, storytelling has been uh, the way to communicate to people, to teach, 
And uh, now that you're saying about uh, the Bible, Jesus used uh, a lot of storytelling to teach to people with uh, topics that they could relate. So now that, uh, as you mentioned, comics are part of, uh, of the culture, people are more uh, attracted and engaged and comics are more available. So uh, yeah, the, the process of creating them, some, some people might think might be so difficult, but um, it's more accessible to, to all that you can think. So yes, uh, tell us more about the process of creating them. Yeah, no, and I'm sorry if I've been speaking. We, this is a conversation with Carlos. I just, I just grab the, the impulse and, and never stop it. But yeah, I, I think it's we have to understand how this been like uh, years of year of, of comic industry making an impact, and they will build in that impact for the time. It's just it started in Yellow Kid and. And now is something that everyone knows. Is that is something that you can have a comic in, in, in Spain and, and you can have a comics in every part of the world. And actually it's, 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 it's really affordable for everyone who doesn't have it uh, on screen at a telephone. And, and also one of the things that, that it, I, I think is impacts me about comic is that it's something you can grab with you go to the school with it, go to the park with it. And you can, you can have the comic, whatever you are. It's, it's not the huge book that is really heavy. And, and that, well, there's trade paperback that are really heavy, but it's just the single floppy can actually be your, your, your companion, wherever you want to go. So I think it's amazing. And please, if you have any question and you have, uh, if you would understand whatever I said before, just make one question, make the question, and Carl is gonna let me know, and we're trying to, to actually uh, answering that question. So, if if we if we're talking about the process about this, the process is what is the process for creating a comic from scratch? And when Carlos made me that question, he's also like, "Whoa, that's a huge huge question. How I do that?" and to make one idea is just let's speak about the comic and the comic has two sides that is really important. And I think is 100% story in 100% visual. It's not just more story than visual. It's not more, more visual the story. Sometimes there are better visuals, but it's always important. And sometimes there are better story but it's always important. Is is the is the is the the combination of cons the story of art one hundred percent story one hundred percent art. <clears throat> and one of the things that we want to tell, I'm just going to speak about the concept, the idea of the story. When we want to write one story for a comic book. We have, we have to make some question to ourselves about how to build this narrative. So if you're writing one story, you have to start asking you what I want to tell. I mean, what? Because if you don't have any what, you will not have anything. So what do you want to tell? You want to tell the story of, of a flying robot in the space with a samurai sword. This is what you want to tell? Okay, that's amazing. This is how it works. What do you want to tell? And the other question is how I want to tell it. Because this is going to be like, okay, I want to tell this, but I want to, I don't know, be a manga anime style. I want to be an European comic style. I want to look like, uh, I don't know, you have, if you like to read comics, you already have like favorite artists, favorite writers. So you're going to start training. How am I going to do this? How many issues I'm going to have? How many parts of the story is going to be? The, the idea of how is just, I'm going to make this a series of how many issues. I'm going to make, this is how I'm going to tell this. In 12 issues is going to be, six issues in color, six issues black and white because 
the color is just lost in the word. The how is just going to be working with that. And who's going to be part of your story? So we're, we're speaking about Bible, biblical truth here. So what I want to tell, I want to tell a biblical truth. What biblical truth I'm going to tell? Well, you're going to find out how and how I want to tell it. I want to tell it in the period of time that the people that the say, yeah, let's say it's just a biblical truth about Jesus. Okay, I'm going to do it in the time of Jesus. I'm going to do it another time or I'm going to do it in present time or in future time or in an altered universe where Jesus still exists, but I don't know, the, the second world war never happened. So you, you can play with all that ideas. But remember, the focus is always the biblical truth and how you're going to tell it. And who is going to be part of my story? If you're going to make it in the Jesus time, well, Jesus can be part of your story. And if you're going to do it in the future, well, Jesus is still alive, so you can make Jesus part of your story. So who's going to be part of your story? And this idea is, uh, and this is just secret that tell me like uh, Brian Azzarello, if you know about him in, in comics, he write one of the craziest jokers ever. And I, I was in a show in, 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 a, in, in a presentation of him in Argentina. And he said, the better story are character driven. The character are the more, most important persons in the comics. And the story, not, not only the comics, the better story are the one who are character driven. When the character is the one to lead, the, lead you in the entire story. And who's part of my story is one of the biggest and most important answers you have to do. Who is going to be the character in my story? Why is going to be the character in my story? And if you, if you, if you create or, or learn how to do a, uh, an interesting character, you grab your editor, you audience, you, got, you grab your readers, and everyone is going to be just, what is going to happen to him? Why is this going to happen to him? And you, you have someone that I need to know what is, when he is going to end up in this story. So the idea of characters and the idea of making compelling characters, they're actually one of the most important. And that can actually bring the question, how do I create compelling characters? Well, that is a completely webinar, an entire uh, story, but um, there's a lot of videos around there how to make a compelling character. But one of the things is, yeah, I think it's quickly enough, the most compelling characters are the most broken characters. Uh, the characters that, that are not perfect, that have flaws, that I can relate with that character, that make a compelling character, someone you can relate with. But that's a, if, if we go to that rabbit hole, we're not going to get out never. So uh, if you're talking about biblical truth, one of the questions we have to do is, what I want to teach. Uh, because this is something that maybe the not Christian comics maybe don't have the answer, maybe they do. But as a Christian, we have to understand that we have to make uh, deliver a message. So what is the message that we want to deliver? It? What I want to teach? I want to teach, uh, I don't know, the mercy of God. I want to teach the love of God. I want to teach the evilness of man and, and the rightfulness of Jesus. So one of the things that we have to, to, to that is just, uh, let's make that actually really, really, uh, really, really quick. It's, what I want to teach. And then you can go and learn a lot of literary research, literary genres, learn how to do a script because you have to do it and order the evidence of my story. What happened first, what happened next and what gonna happen next after the next. So, uh, 
And then we go to the R part and the R part is just pre-production, production and post-production. This is, and I hope you don't get bored with that, but this is a production sheet and how each page it has about pre-production, pre-production. This is a work of 24 pages about this. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to script, sketching, make the layout, make the pencil lines, the inks, the scans, after the scans, and why scans is, so, scans is so important because we have to clean, prepare the file, or then go to digital. And then we flat color, make the color correction necessary, and add all the letterings, the balloons, the onomatopoeia, and then we go to graphics, and then we have finished. That is for every page. And let's say this is a 24 pages. And one of the things that we add is the demo page, that actually the page that said what we want to teach. Okay, the other stuff is, uh, this is just one example of this, the, the, the thing that I was talking. If you see the layout here, this is just the sketch. It's just like this, maybe how small it is. I can do a lot of this in one hour and try all the composition possible. And I can get wrong in here to not get wrong in here. So when I do art, I just do a lot of this and trying to find the best composition possible. And then this is a sample of that page in ink format. And this is going to repeat. And when, we, when I say it's just line, I use blue line because it's easier to remove the blue line in, in Photoshop. So also this is the process about coloring. It is the layering, the ink, and the ink is you have to clean and, and erase all the pencil draft that get here. You clean that page and then you pass the flat. Then you add volume lights and all the stuff. And then you add lettering. We're gonna talk about this project in a bit. So one of the questions that actually uh, Carlos said, and I'm gonna let him to tell me that, that question is, uh, uh, go ahead, Carlos. Oh yeah, but before going, uh, it's very important, uh, and thank you for sharing the the process of creating comics, because uh, in my experience, teamwork is uh, a key yeah. to creating a successful comic. Having uh, at least one people, I mean, one extra uh, part of your team, like you can work with an editor or with a, a writer, because that way uh, you can give feedback to one another. And uh, also, as you said, the, the story is really important. You know, you have to have a good story that uh, supports all the message, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, and, and you know, I admire the work you do and, and you know, the, the, the order you follow, because it's really important also to follow deadlines and have like, you know, production sheets and, what do you said? Yeah, this is a great example. The slide we're, we're watching. All the uh, visual process and sketching is really important. When we teach com uh, uh, comics uh, uh, seminars or webinars, I say to the students that sketching is really, really important. You have to make a lot of sketches before creating a character, like visually, and and also for the final work. So and, and, yeah, and, and, and one thing that Carlos said in in this make the impression that I did all this by myself. No, this, we are a team. I just do the, the, the line, the inks, and then there's someone in, in charge of the coloring, in charge of the flat, in charge of the lettering. So this is just a team project. I'm, I'm not able to do all this by myself. The, we, you need a team for this. So, so if, if the impression is gay that this is, he do everything, no, it's just a team project. And one of the things that Carlos actually asked me is what have been the most successful project on Mercy Ways? And I'm going to take like a few minutes to explain what Mercy Ways is because right now we have no idea. And Mercy Ways is uh, something that born in 14, in 2014, 
as an idea in my head. I used to work a lot of video games and all the comic, and then I met the Lord. And he changed entirely a lot of stuff for me. And actually, he changed my idea of what kind of story I want to tell. And But here in El Salvador, comics are not a huge deal. And the work that I do have is we work for, for, for other countries. But I have no idea about working in comics, uh, Christian comics, and all that stuff. So Mercy Way, it's a comic industry, a comic company, sorry, that actually make completely full comics, Christian comics. That is his main topic. That is all that we do. And the idea is to make actually uh, amazing comics for everyone who wants to, to see it and, and who want to read it. So Carlos asked me what has been our most successful Mercy Word project. And I'm going to say we have, as Mercy Ways, three huge projects. Uh, from 2017 to 2019, we have Fear Not. That is was, it's just that's the Spanish version, but we have Fear Not that actually uh, is a 12 issue comics. It's been from three amazing years telling the story of, Sa of Sama. Uh, one kid that learned to defeat his fear, trusting in Jesus. And you can see they have the shield of faith. He always bring his Bible with him. We want to make a, a, an amazing stuff. And the other idea is just the Bible, the Bible for kids. We, we make that for Unilit. And then right now we are working in Chronicles of Faith, David. So what has been our most successful project? I think is Fear Not. Fear Not is the, the project that actually, I think, make a lot of impact. You can see the 12 cover there. There was translating three language. And we have the amazing blessing. Um, and the Lord was good with us. And we won, we won the best children Bible project in 2017 in Germany. So I was not there when, when the, the, they were delivered, but the project was so well received. So that earned that. And you can see it's, it's been translated by the Canadian Bible Society. It born here in El Salvador and it was translated to English and it was translated to, to, to France, oh, to, to French, sorry. And this is just a sample how Bible Society is using this. It's just, they go to everywhere, sharing the comics they go. Actually, it's been uh, a play in, in some churches <clears throat> it's been a uh, children congress in the subject of fear not. And here in the Salvador, sadly, we have a lot of violence and, and I think it's around the world, but here in Salvador it's a lot. And I think one of the best thing that we have is just sharing the idea of you can defeat fear with faith, faith in Jesus. So I think this is amazing and it's actually part of the curriculum of the material of the Bible Society of El Salvador, who are the co-productions of this comic. And they can go everywhere with it and it can function as place, children covenants and churches. So uh, I think is what has been the biggest challenge in, I don't know, Mercy Way career. Oh, uh, last time Carlos made me this question, I think is the same, it's just, try to balance. You have to keep having a closer relationship with Jesus because he, I, I remember every time it's just John 15, he said, you can do nothing apart from me. And sometimes the daily stuff, it just works so hard. You have to draw many pages. You have to go to the publisher and a lot of stuff. But the idea of having Jesus as part of our team as one of the most important part of our team is just the Lord and the savior of each one of the team. Having a closer relationship with him, I think is the bigger challenge in my career. So I think is, that is amazing. And I think we can go to here, right, Carlos? Yes, yes, thank you very much. And, and yeah, you said that that's one of the biggest challenges for all of us, you know, to keep uh, our relationship with God 
fruitful. And um, yeah, we have uh, some questions from our audience here. And um, I'm going to start because uh, we, can, we can keep the conversation going because these are really clever questions that uh, I myself have, have uh, thought when I started doing comics. And before going, I want to uh, talk about uh, two books that you uh, recommended or talk about. Will Eisner and Scott McCloud's uh, book, books yeah. are uh, really, uh, they helped me a lot when I was learning to do how to do comics. So I'm, I'm glad you uh, bring them to, to this talk. And now that they are, you know, uh, digital books are more available yes. worldwide. I think that's a great resource. So we're going to start with uh, Dina Tuasun. I hope I said, said it right. It says, Dear Iv Ivan, thank you for your wonderful presentation. I am Dina from Indonesia. What do you think about using humor in comics, especially for children, to convey Christian messages? Oh, I, I think it's one way. I, I see no problem with it. I, I think this has to be a, a, the right kind of humor, a humor that a kid can understand. And But I think no problem with it. I always picture Jesus is just making jokes and, and, and be friendly with everyone. So I think it's no problem with that. Uh, actually, we use jokes in, in our comics for kids. Uh, we tend to make, they're trying to make innocent jokes that a kid can understand that actually do not against what we believe, but I think is amazing. Actually, there's, there's uh, so many comedians that are actually uh, using stand-up comedy to share the gospel. You can search for that and that is amazing. Yeah, you can go to Teofany Media and you can find so many uh, interviews with a stand-up comedian, Christian stand-up comedian, that are using comedy to share the gospel. Yeah, I think it's really, it's a, a useful way to, yeah. to engage with the readers using humor because, uh, you know, a drama is uh, also a tool, but I think, you know, you can, you can make it more uh, relatable when you use a little bit of humor. I, I saw the, or I have read the Manga Messiah series that I yeah. did in Japan and it has, you know, uh, different jokes and funny reaction from the disciples. And that's, uh, well, that's part of the style, but that's also uh, really helpful. We have another question from Adna McKenna. And this is a really good one also. What is the usual time frame for making one comic? Well, I can, I can give you the ideal, but always life happened, but we're trying to make a new comic every 19 days. Uh, no, no 19, 90 days. For three months and a half, we work to try to make a new comics. We are a five person team. So we are working in that most of the time. So we try to do 90 days, yeah, 90 days. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Sometimes it happens to me, I don't know if it have happened to you, that in your mind you have a time frame, and when you start working, you know, because sometimes <laughs> I do a sketching and then I change the characters or sometimes the editor gives me some feedback about the characters and I have to redraw them. So yeah, it's a lot of work oh, oh, with a lot of people. Oh, oh, you picture something and, and then you start to add details and details and details and you never stop. So you're going to take more time than that ever happens. Yeah, you that's what you imagine. It's important to have a teamwork, you know, people, yeah. editor or, or, or somebody telling you that this is the deadline. Yeah, okay. actually, one of the things that we have, we have a project management. Uh, one of my partners is project management who actually breathing in my neck saying, you have to deliver this in this time. So that is so important. Every artist needs someone like that in your life. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next question. It's Natalie Brindley. It says, how much time do you dedicate daily to working on comics? Actually, this is my yeah, full-time job. So I try to draw since 9 a.m. until maybe 10 p.m. every day. I just lunch, I do lunch, I do sleep, I do breakfast and dinner, but I'm going to church too. I don't work in, 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 in weekends, but this is my uh, amount of time. And sometimes it's not even drawing, it's just having meetings, it's just uh, go to the, to the talk with the team. Uh, this is a lot of work too, but I try to work in that time period. And sometimes I just need to take a break maybe 4 p.m. and just 
just don't draw, don't do anything, but come back with a lot of emotion. It's a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the uh, things uh, that many people don't know about, it's that research is also an important part of the uh, creative process. Yeah. Looking for, especially when you're doing biblical uh, adaptations, you know, yeah. I, I found it myself, you have to uh, research on, on the clothing, the, the buildings, uh, even, you know, the, the tools they use for the kitchen and the tables and, you know, and that, that takes, that's very time consuming, you know, doing yeah. research and, and gathering all your visual references. It, 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 it's just like something you have to do, but you don't count it when you make your mind time that this is going to take me two days. Maybe it's going to take you four because you don't count this and this and this and this. And, but that's just important because that actually adds something to the comic and add some yeah. precision in, and, and make and help you to get, get into the comic. You transport the reader to that time. Yeah, thank you. Well, I have another question from Ivanova Nona Fatsa from Cameroon, a dear friend uh, and a great writer that I have worked with. It says, thank you, uh, Ivan, for the great presentation. When you work with a writer, what do you expect from them as a writer? How can I complete part of the process before handing it over to the illustrator? Uh, I, well, I, I'm, I'm going to speak about the illustrator side. Uh, I think it, maybe if you already have the complete idea in your mind, you're going to write it right away and you're going to make it possible. But as an illustrator, I would love to hear of be able to to read about the project and, and start to visualize and maybe get into the, 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 the creation process because that's going to help me as an illustrator to understand the story you want to tell. Uh, and, and when I understand what are you trying to tell, it's going to be easier for me to make it visual because ah, this is what she wants. This is what they want. So I work with Brandon Hunnersworth from Brainy Pixels, he's a great, great uh, writer. And we actually have meetings before he even start to, to, to write because he actually said, this is what I want to do. And this is the type of story that I want. And maybe I can just uh, uh, do some suggestions. And he actually think, oh, that's just awesome. Oh, that's not gonna work. So that actually helped. And if you, and, and if you already have the story and you're searching, for an artist to do the work and you have no connection with any artist, one of the things that you, you, you want to do with the artist is actually tell what is that story important to you. He's not going to, this is what I want you to do and, and, and go and do it. No, we need something more. We need that, oh, can we meet? Can we have a Zoom? Uh, can I ask so many questions? Can you explain this because I don't understand it? Can we make these little changes? And that, that is, is, is a, it's a relationship between writer and artist. It's not just do your job, I do mine. I think the better story is just when it's a teamwork. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have questions from Benedita Nambiu. It says, thank you for, uh, very much for your, your moving presentation. Are there specific programs to teach how to draw? And do you use software to draw? I'm an old school guy. I do pencil and paper. <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's a software to teach you to draw, uh, but I think YouTube have all the videos and all the tutorial have how to draw something that is hard. I actually sometimes just look how to draw a, a hand in some position or how to draw a, a, a body in tracing and, 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 and turning in some special position. So every, every person needs some reference. So don't be ashamed to use it. Uh, it's, it's better to use a reference and have a good drawing that be powerful enough to don't have a good drawing. So it's just everyone needed. So I think uh, one of the things that I'm gonna recommend to you is never stop drawing. If you already know that uh, it's hard for me to draw this, well, start searching how to draw it and you're going to get better uh, in no time. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's very important, the use of uh, references for, for a better results. And finally, we have uh, David uh, Munier asking and commenting, thank you, this is very exciting. What, what program is used to do draw comics? You have already, already answered that. And uh, what, does it take to, uh, what does it take to be a comic artist? Is it rewarding? Can it employ a person for a living? Oh, that is a huge question. Uh, well, that depends. When, if you need, what, do you, what it takes to be a comic artist, I think is never give up because it's not an easy medium to get into. And I'm not talking about Christian comics. And in general, it's just something uh, you need to be perseverance. You need to have resilience <laughs> to be working in this. Uh, and if you are well organized and you understand how uh, finances work in this medium, like sometimes you can have like a lot of jobs and sometimes you may have not even one and you have to be, I, I don't know, just see that in forward. I, I'm going to use this for this and I'm going to save that if I don't get any job. I think it can be working. And one of the things that I can tell to you is uh, make God part of that process because he's going to lead, guide you. I'm not saying that God is going to make that a prophet. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's going to guide you. Uh, I remember one of the person that actually was filled in the, in the, with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the second person was not a prophet, was not a preacher, was not a priest. He was an artist. And God made that art for one purpose. So it is the same God, is the same spirit that, that can help you a lot. So one of the things is, is uh, be persevering. Try to make connections, uh, make the best work you can do and put, put in, the, in the hand of God and be wise in, with your money. And that is going to help you to make a living in this. <laughs> yes, and for God, everything's possible. That's a reality for myself. I, yeah. I do comics full time by God's grace. And that was a desire for me for a long time. And now it's a reality. And uh, finally, um, uh, we have, uh, okay, okay, no, no more uh, open questions. Uh, Ramon is asking us to type the, in the chat the title and author of the two reference books that, he, that we found helpful. So um, I'm, I'm going to type in the author, Eisner, and Scott McCloud. Those are the... the the, the comic of Scott McCloud is called Understanding Comics. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody who's been here. Um, uh, it's been great being here with, with, here with you again. Ivan, we already had this webinar in Spanish. Now we have it in, in English for our friends around the globe. We had, as Ramon said earlier, people from uh, 19 countries. And... Yeah. Um, we invite you to register to the next uh, MAI webinars. Uh, They're amazing. We, you you should do that. You can grow a lot of a lot in this in this idea of printing and teaching Bible truth. Yeah, uh, we we have coming one next week in Spanish on July the twentieth, and then we have another in, Ang in English in August the tenth on how to publish for the general market. Yeah. Um, to look out for the webinar invitations to uh, follow MAI on social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the YouTube channel, and through uh, www.litworld.org. So yeah. thank you very much, Ivan. God bless you. And please say hi to all the team of Mercy Ways. You're doing an yeah. excellent job for the kingdom and for the comics industry. Also, if you want to follow Mercy Ways in our social media, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube. Uh, you, can, you can follow me too. Uh, I put a lot, of, a lot of random stuff, but if you have any other question that I can help you, please, I just make take some time, but I try to answer every question you do. You can find me as Ivan Anaya. So, and also 
right now we we're, we're just uh, working in a comic of David. So if you go to check it out, please. And thank you everyone for listening to me for more than an hour. <clears throat> Not even I do that. So thank you really much. Thank you very much and see you soon. God bless you. God bless you everyone.